Anyway, for the first video, I thought I'll address one of the common issues that I see out there, uh, especially with the laptop users who have multi-boot enabled. Multi-boot is basically just as it sounds. You have more than one options to boot to, meaning that you have multiple operating systems installed on your laptop. <coughs> Now when someone tries to get into the Linux side of things, uh, I recommend that they try it out with Ubuntu first because Ubuntu is a very user friendly operating system with a fairly powerful set of features. But after they install Ubuntu and they use it for a while, the uh, grub menu and everything starts to get annoying and they say that they don't want Ubuntu anymore and they are going back to hashtag team windows. Well, the solution is simple, you just have to remove Ubuntu from your hard drive. So what do they do? They fire up disk management, uh, find the partition in which they have installed Ubuntu, right click and then simply delete the partition. Problem solved, right? Yeah, not so much because Ubuntu is kind of a crybaby because as long as everything is in its place, Ubuntu is happy because when you install Ubuntu on top of Windows, the grub menu that you see there is uh, from Ubuntu itself. It's booting from slash grub.efi. So when you simply wipe the partition in which Ubuntu was installed, uh, the boot manager of your computer does not know which path to boot. Uh, Windows operating system is intact on your hard drive, but it doesn't know the path. That is when you see that uh, horrible GNU grub menu screen. Now when you're in this screen, how do you boot back to Windows and make sure that this screen doesn't come up again? Uh, it's quite simple really, you just have to apply logic, that's it. And a couple of commands which I will tell you now. Now the first thing that you do when you see this GNU grub menu is to use the ls command. Now if you are familiar with Linux, uh, which I'm sure you are, uh, ls basically lists all the files and directories which it finds on the hard drive in that partition. Now since we don't have a particular operating system booted up right now, it just lists all the partitions that it can find on the particular hard drive or an SSD. Next, you find out which one of those partitions contains the Windows boot managers, uh, you know, the path. You try to get into each individual partition by giving ls command and then the uh, the name of the partition itself, whether it's hd0gpt1, hd0gpt2. Make sure that you give a forward slash after you have specified the partition so that the ls command understands you are trying to get into this path. Now if the partition that you are trying to get into is not a bootable partition, it will say something like uh, unrecognized file system or uh, whatever. But don't worry, your partition is not corrupted, it simply is not the right one that you should be looking for. So when you find one partition opening up, like in uh, my case, uh, HD0 GPT-1 opened up into three more uh, folders inside it, EFI, Ubuntu as well as Microsoft, you simply have to go into these folders and find the boot manager path. And my light just died. Great. Now I know for a fact that the uh, Windows boot image will usually be under EFI, Microsoft, boot, and then it will be something like boot uh, mgr.efi or boot mgfw.efi. So that is the correct one and it will be common for you as well. So you can just take it for granted from me. Now that you have found the boot image, it's time to go ahead and boot to it. Now first there is an optional step where you can check whether the uh, partitions are working fine or if any file is missing or misplaced somewhere. And that is from a command called insmod. Uh, insmod simply stands for insert module. It basically is inserting a module and checking for errors in the kernel. You can skip this if you want, but uh, no harm in running this. So simply type insmod part underscore gpt. Additionally, you can also type insmod chain because we will be using something called a chain loader. Well, what is a chain loader? Uh, well, chain loading is a method of booting into a particular operating system which cannot be directly booted uh, using the Linux grub. And our amazing Windows operating system is one such OS. It's very stubborn and it does not boot automatically. So we are using the command chain loader with the path to boot to that particular boot image, which is nothing but our Windows OS, which we want. Simply type chain loader with the same uh, path which you found, the full path. If you want, you can set the root as the uh, partition where you found this. Simply type set root is equal to hd0, gpt, whichever one. It's not a required step, but uh, it will allow you to simply start writing paths without specifying the uh, partition before them. If you don't mind typing it every single time, then uh, you can go ahead and ignore this. Now that you have done this, uh, the chain loader automatically takes this path into consideration and now you just have to type the boot keyword and hit enter. If the image that you are given is the right one, the Windows operating system should boot up normally. If you have supplied the wrong boot image though, uh, then you will get this error like uh, cannot boot into particular image. Now here's an interesting observation, uh, like when you get this error, Look for look for the path uh, which it's trying to boot. If it says something like uh, grubx64.efi, uh, it means that it is still trying to boot into the uh, Ubuntu grub which you have just deleted from the partitions. So it's very simple to fix actually. All you have to do is uh, once the Windows boots up, you just have to go into bcd edit and change the default uh, boot manager. 
If Windows doesn't boot up, what might happen? Well, luckily Windows 10 has a recovery feature where if the operating system did not boot up correctly, it will bring you to this uh, advanced recovery page where you just have to go into advanced options and then go into command prompt. Just uh, got a little bit closer. Hi. And now once you're into command prompt, uh, either in the Windows operating system or from the recovery page, uh, simply type bcd edit and then hit enter. bcd stands for boot configuration data and bcd edit is well it allows you to edit the uh, data which is present in the boot configuration uh, which includes our boot manager path. That's the only thing that we need to access. Now as soon as you entered uh, bcd edit uh, you should see some uh, details in your screen which also includes the boot manager. It should say Windows 10 or whichever operating system that you have and then it should mark it as current meaning that that is the one that you are currently booted into. If you are accessing this in the recovery page it will not say current. Ignore the one that says Windows 10 boot manager or something and only focus on the operating system itself and notice which path is it pointing to. If it says something like EFI slash grubx64.efi that is wrong. That's the Ubuntu scrub which is no longer there so we have to change it to the Windows boot manager. How do we do that? A very simple command. Simply type bcd edit slash set. Now uh, that is the keyword which allows you to set some variable to a data. Are you sure about that? Uh, I mean set, set data to a variable. Jesus. So simply type bcd edit slash set and within flower quotes type a boot mgr meaning that we are changing the path for the boot manager. Then write the keyword path and simply specify the path which you have discovered which contains the right boot image. Now note that this is windows so you have to use backslash instead of forward slash so that's the thing to keep in mind. Now one thing to note is that the bcd edit set command does not check for the path so if you do some spelling mistakes in the uh, file name when you mention it, it will simply take it and say the uh, operation was successful. It will not tell you that such a file does not exist. So if you give the wrong file name uh, while setting the path and then you think that the operation was successful. The next time when you boot your computer, uh, the GNU grub will come back at you Surprise, like So make sure you give the correct path and the correct file name and then double check it. Once you have uh, changed the boot manager path, uh, you should never see the GNU grub once again and uh, since you are pointing to windows by default, as soon as you turn on the computer, windows should boot up no matter what. So yeah, congratulations, you have fixed your uh, GNU grub problem after uh, irresponsibly deleting the partition of Ubuntu. That's not how you remove Ubuntu by the way. Anyway, uh, that's it for now. I uh, hope you learned something new or uh, found it useful in case you did uh, format the Ubuntu partition and now you're wondering how to get back into your laptop. And well, this is how. Well, subscribe to this channel if you would like to. Uh, it's kind of like my backup channel or uh, I, I don't even know what to do with this. I just had my name with Dope Tech Fever and I associated with it here. So 